What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. And on today's episode, we actually will be doing draft player profiles on Jaden Hardy and Masu Diabante. And I hope that I did not murder that name too badly. I know I got the last name right. Like, like Mosa Diabante. It's Mosa Diabante. Come on, man. Why do, why do I change letters in my brain? Nonetheless, we'll be doing player profiles of both of these players. Uh, very good prospects and players that both should be around the area where the Chicago Bulls draft. We'll also be talking about more of workouts that the Bulls have been scheduling and what that could mean. We'll get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans. So our Chicago Bulls front office continues to schedule workouts with players who are who are projected to be undrafted. This time, Vance Jackson Jr. has a workout schedule with the Chicago Bulls. And this one, uh, again, player who's he's not listed on any mocks, not a single one. And also coming out this morning, Teddy Allen also has a uh, workout schedule with the Bulls. What does this mean? I, I've already given you guys my conspiracy theory, so I'm not going to really dive into that once again. But it really does raise the question of like, all right, what 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 are the what are the what's the what's Acme planning here? Because I do think that it's going to be something major. I do think that it is going to be something that we just don't expect. Whether that be a signing after the after the um the draft is over with, some undrafted free agents. If it's not a bigger deal worked out, like who knows? But AK and Eversley are doing their very much due diligence when they're going that far in the prospects for the draft. Now, while the, this draft isn't one of those drafts that are deep in the sense of superstar talent, there are a lot of potential role players to be gotten in this draft. So them doing the research this deep, you know, just signifies probably that they are really seeing what they can. If they can bring anybody to a G League deal that ends up turning into something down the road, all those questions uh, will remain to be answered. And we know AK and Eversley are going to do their thing. But let's go ahead and get into our draft player profiles. This one is for Mosa Diabante. This is a 6'10", 215 pound power forward slash center with a 7 1 wingspan. He's only 20 years old. And he has uh, drawn comparisons to Al Harrington. Now, Al Harrington was a player that in his time, I think, was really, had he played now, right? Because he was a power forward at the time. A little looked at being undersized at that time, right? That wouldn't necessarily be as undersized now. He shot threes. He was really versatile. Um, so I really do like that comparison for Mosa Diabante and what that what that couldn't possibly mean for him. Um, but getting into his skills, this guy is just a mobile, big again, kind of like what I said. I believe with Tari Eason that he he can shoot from mid range. He has some three point shooting as well. He has a very good versatility on the offensive end. But he's also a good rebounder. He's going to be somebody who goes out and can run the floor with, again, Lonzo Ball, get out in, in that transition. Not that he's going to only eat in transition, but considering his rebounding, considering that he can really, really be somebody in transition that finds his way and his, his path to the Chicago Bulls and his way to impact the game right away, being somebody who blocks shots, being somebody who can pass in the open floor as well, but also be on the receiving end of passing from Alice Caruso, Io DeSumo, Lonzo Ball, in, in those passing lanes. Like this, again, I don't want to make it seem like he's the perfect player because he's not, but the fact that he can play high-low pick and roll, um, he can hit he can hit the shot, he has some, he will need work on post moves. He doesn't have the true back-to-the-basket post moves, but because he does play with energy, and athleticism, and, he, and he's a really good offensive rebounder. That's the key thing, and we know that the Bulls' offensive rebounding is something that we really lacked at. Him being able to bring that, eating off second chance points, getting out in transition, he has a huge amount of upside, especially looking at his age. Like, he, he, uh, he just turned 20 in January, so he will turn 21 over the course of his rookie season, but this is a guy who just, when you look at, he, he just has the motor. He has the motor that can go. He has legit NBA size for his position. We know he's probably going to put on some more weight as well over his career. But listen, and the thing that I also like about this guy is his, he, he, while he's not the best one-on-one -on -one defender, he's not the strongest player. Those are some of the weaknesses he is going to have to add to that, fr that frame. But he's vocal on the defensive end. And one of the things that we do know that helps with defense, and that's on every level. That doesn't matter the capability of whoever your one-on-one -on -one defenders are. 
somebody who's vocal on the defensive end, that's that speaks to basketball IQ because to be vocal, you also have to be able to read the other team's offense and what they're trying to do well. Again, not the best defensive player, but he absolutely is a player that you can see turning into a very solid team defender, if not a solid one-on-one defender as well. Mosa Diabonte is the is is the the almost prototypical modern power forward slash center because of everything that he can do, can score it inside, can score out, has that mid-range game, really is and can develop into a very effective three-level scorer in the NBA. And then the fact that he's not shy on defense. Yes, I mean, he he needs to work on that one-on-one defense, and I do think working on that upper body strength is going to help him a lot defensively. He's going to, if that focus is there, and from everything that I've seen, heard about the kid, everything, that focus is going to be there. He's focused on basketball. He's not a bad defender, but he doesn't stand out as a defender. Now, while the rebounding game is very solid for him as well, despite his athleticism, his hopping ability, he's not the best shot blocker quite yet, but you can definitely see that as the game slows down, possibly turning into a a solid part of his game. He's not the best quick uh as far as lateral quickness player either and that's something i have been focusing on especially with the big man prospects because of switchability in the nba being a big thing in today's nba but with that being said he's not slow laterally either he's not the quickest player laterally but he's not i wouldn't categorize him as slow laterally either and then if he learns to use that length and his size to his advantage he can be a very good player in pick and roll defense and maybe have some switchability down to like he, he can possibly, depending on the weight that he that he br- brings on and how that weight affects his mobility, he can very well be a player that can guard anywhere from five to three in the, on the NBA level. And that is something that would be key. And when you look at, again, some, something that I'm always looking at for Bulls prospects, especially with big men, I'm looking for a few different things. And this is my list is A, <coughs> can they play ne- next to Patrick Williams long term? Because as we know, this Bulls, front office is very invested in Patrick Williams and I don't see them letting Patrick Williams go anytime soon so what is that matchup like next to Patrick Williams and I think that he brings a lot of the things that Patrick Williams doesn't especially when you look at him being a legit 6'10 um having that 7'1 wingspan we know Patrick Williams has a huge wingspan as well being at 6'9 but I do see a world in which these players can play next to each other now would Musa Diabante develop into a starter that remains to be seen I definitely looking at everything on him I definitely can see that happening Him playing next to Patrick Williams could be something. Now, I know a lot of Bulls fans are worried about the undersized. Again, I don't think that that's a thing when you have two players, 6'9", 6'10", next to each other in the front court that both have over seven-foot wingspans. I think that that there's enough length and versatility there for them to cover for each other. Now, one of the things that he also... You know, his his ability to be a smart passer in the open court. Again, is he not necessarily somebody that I think would develop into a true point forward, but he's somebody that has enough passing ability that in the flow of the offense and in transition can get very creative for the Chicago Bulls. Now, some of the things that he does fall with weakness in, it seems like sometimes he suffers from that thing where his he he he's ahead of the play a little bit, right? He 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 makes passes and they're good passes, right? Technically. But he's a little. If he would have slowed down a little bit and thought about about that pass for for a second before, that maybe it would have been a more precision pass. Some of those turnovers come from that. But again, with everything, nobody comes in as a perfect player. But the fact that he that you can say that he's a solid passer in open court and in the half court, there's enough to build on there where I think that he could be a very good player for the Chicago Bulls. Um, so you know that's my thoughts on Musa Diabante. I love saying his name as well. Like, that's just, you know, and this may be something that doesn't matter long term, but you know that Stacey King is going to have a hell of a nickname for Musa Diabonte. Now, I don't even think I finished my list. So uh, what I look for in big man, A, what's the long term projection next to Patrick Williams? Uh, if that, if, you know, if they're, if they're projected to kind of go into the starter, uh, the versatility, what can they do as far as switching? Are they a liability on the defensive end of the ball? And then secondly, is that passing? Is that, I mean, thirdly, I guess on this list, is that passing? What type of passer are they? Are they a half court passer? Can they be an open court passer? He really checks all my lists on big men that I want to get. Now, again, there are some big men that I definitely have ranked above him. That's for sure. I'm not saying he's my number one prospect by any means, but if he does end up falling to the Chicago Bulls, 
I, I listen, I think this would be a hell of a pick for the Bulls. Let me know what you guys think down below on Musa Diabante. I love saying, listen, Stacey King is going to have a hell of a nickname for this kid if he ends up being a Chicago Bull. Let me know what you guys think down, about him down below. Do you think he turns into a player that the Bulls could realistically draft? Next, we're going to get into our pra player profile for Jaden Hardy. Now, this is a kid who skipped college. He went to the uh, uh, the 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 G League, the Ignite. I, I'm going to still be playing his uh, his highlights here on that. And this is a this is a guy who's gotten comparisons to Buddy Hield. And the reason why, like Buddy Hield is not a perfect player at all, but something that I do think that, and he's also gotten uh, comparisons to Anthony Simons as well. Now we know Anthony Simons is a baller. Now. Some things that I'm looking at with Jaden Hardy, if he does end up being the pick for the Chicago Bulls, is that, as we know, the Bulls did not have the best scoring off the bench. Jaden Hardy projects to be able to bring that right away. Shooting ability. He is a solid shooter, right? And shooters are different from scores. I definitely think and can see Jaden Hardy turning into a hell of a scorer on the NBA level. And he also, a guard 6'4", has a 6'10 wingspan. He's only 19 years old. Um, he just turned 19 in July, so he will be 19, or uh, he will turn 20 before the start of the NBA season. But this is another guy who you can definitely look at and see developing some, uh, and be, having maybe a specialist in the NBA, right? Maybe never being a starter, but being a solid bench scorer. And he has great movement defensively while not being the best defensive player. Unlike a Kobe White, who's just failed defensively for the Chicago Bulls more times, not even though he did improve last season. That right now, I would expect Jaden Hardy to be a better defender, on-ball defender, than Kobe White. Kobe White's weak side de defense came far um, in, in this season, so I'm going to focus on that. But this guy was highly recruited. The fact that he ended up going to the G League was a bit of a shock instead of going into college. Um, again, this guy, contact. He finishes around contact at the rim with an almost elite level. He knows how to create his own shot. That's another key thing that's different, right? You have shooters, scorers who can't necessarily create their own shot. He can do that. He has slashing ability. Um, he, he Listen, while I, I said his defense isn't terrible, he comes in as a defender that knows how to play in the passing lanes, that knows how to really, like I said, be an intelligent defender. He uses his link on the defensive end very well and the speed. While not as fast as a Kobe White, theoretically, we know what Kobe White's measurements were. This guy has that change of pace speed that you can see if he gets out in the open court, he can get very creative. And again, compare that with his ability to finish around the rim, finish with contact. He has a great step back jumper already. This guy comes in with an offensive and a bit of a defensive skill set as well that you can see him being a key part for whoever team's bench coming right into the NBA. Now, he may also go to a team that maybe can afford to start him and develop him that way. But I, I like to focus on the Chicago Bulls. He's not going to have the, the athleticism that just wows you, that, that jumps out the gym. But he brings a total offensive package that really, it comes all together. And the fact that he does have now some form of professional experience playing in the, in the G League Ignite, that says a lot to me about if he is the pick, especially when you look at being later in the draft the Bulls being able are looking to improve their bench. With players like this, you bring a player in who's still young, 20 years old. He'll be the only 20-year-old player with, with uh, professional experience in this draft. When you look at him being 20, look at him being having a skill set you can see being ready-made for an NBA bench, if not more. Jaden Hardy could be a very great pick for the Chicago. He could be a good pick initially. But could it develop into a great pick when you look at the way that he uh, that he can develop? Now, some of the weaknesses, got to get past this. He's not the best isolation scorer, right? But, again, the way that I'm talking about him is as a bench player. You don't necessarily, you're not going to see a rookie, a, a rookie six-man, or a, he won't be the six-man, but a rookie player coming off the bench that gets a lot of isolation opportunities. And I think also when you look at the, 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 this team, he's always going to be out on the, on the floor with a, a, a point guard that can distribute the ball. So he's not necessarily going to have to go in that. But again, just being um, honest, he's not the best isolation player. Um, he can be predictable as well in, in, you know, always going either right or left, things like that. Um, and he, he's always, every rookie is going to be in need of refinement, but he's going to be in need of not taking those wild shots sometimes. There, he does have a propensity to really get, wild with the shots that he takes sometimes because he's a hell of a shooter but he, he can get wild on that so he's definitely one of those upside players 
but can give you something right. He can contribute right now, and in contributing right now, you can bring him along. He he is he undersized? Again, I have a difference of opinion when it comes to undersized players in today's modern NBA. Um, for me, at at 6'4, a shooting guard with a wingspan that he has, a 16, 6'10 wingspan, I don't consider that undersized, in my opinion. Now, if you do, hey, that that take that. I can't take that away from you, but I just don't look at that being undersized. Now, depending on the rest of the matchup, if the Bulls run like a, if they're running a 6'4 player also at power forward, then yes, everything's undersized at that point. But considering that we think the Bulls are going to improve their size overall, I think Jaden Hardy would be a hell of a pick for the Chicago Bulls. Not the perfect pick either, but when you look at the upside and where he can go, those, com those comps to Buddy Hield, Anthony Simons, looking at those two things, even if he falls on the middle of that, even if he falls on the Buddy Hield side of that, a little bit better because I think he's better defensively as well. I think you can get a hell of a bench player, a role player in Jaden Hardy. Now, some people could say there are definitely players even at this at lower ends that have way more of a role. They have way higher of a ceiling than just a role player. But Jaden Hardy, I don't think would be a bad pick at all for the Chicago Bulls, depending on what they feel they need to do at guard. Let me know what you guys think down below on Jaden Hardy after hearing this, seeing some of his tape. How do you think he would fill in the Chicago Bulls? Would you guys be happy if he is the pick for the Chicago Bulls at the number 18th pick? I'll tell you this right now. Jaden Hardy is one of those players that I could possibly see dropping a little further into that second round. I, whatever, it's, if the Bulls keep their 18th pick, if, they, if there's a move to be made, especially considering that they still don't have a first round pick next year, let's say that they don't move their 18th pick. They still have, I would not mind. Think about this. And you could probably convince a team. And this is just my thinking. You can probably convince a team to take Kobe White instead of Jaden Hardy and maybe packaging a future second-round pick with Kobe White and saying, hey, listen, you take Kobe White. He's been in the NBA a little bit longer. Send us Jaden Hardy. I would not mind that at all. But I want to hear from you guys down below. Let me know what you think about these two prospects that we covered today. As you already know, you can follow the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. BullCentralPod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text and a voicemail about these prospects, any other prospects, offseason moves, free agents, anything, 773-270-2799. That's it for me for today. Like I liked in every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Break Media. 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 Media.